Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Cody. I'm a private boater and today we're going to finish our three-part series on how to build out a boat and frame. So today we're going to be talking about oars, oar locks, and retention systems. So in front of me, I've got two different types of oar locks and these are called open oar locks. And one is the Sawyer A and one is the Sawyer Cobra. Both I think are excellent products. Uh, if you are going to be buying um, an open oar lock, I would recommend going with Sawyer. I would stay away from the NRS products, uh, nothing against NRS. I just do not like their open oar locks. Uh, so I'm gonna start on the A, and the A is nice because um, it's simple to tune on the river. It's simple to tune in your shop. Um, and overall, it's a very simple like design. What I like about the Cobras is that you have the option for the nut retaining system. Uh, so just look at their website, kind of decide on what you find is important to you. Uh, with that said, if you are ordering open oar locks, order them in the 5 8 shank. There. There's uh, two different diameters from Sawyer. There's a half inch and 5 8 I would say 99% of the people that are whitewater boating are going to have frames set up for a 5 8 shank. Uh, on the A's, I do have a spring um, system on it to keep it flush down to the top of the oar locks or the oar towers. And I actually really, really like this setup. Uh, downside with this setup um, on some other ones is it might make some noise, um, some creaking um, on, on multi-day long uh, trips. Definitely ones that don't have the rubber bushing in there. Uh, but for my day frame, which is the silver one, I really like having that uh, oar lock really tight in here and have zero play. So because these have are open oar locks, you need to have some type of oar leash on it. There are a lot of commercial products out there for oar leashes. I don't like any of them. I've used a lot of them. I've tried a lot of them over it. Um, they seem very, very simple uh, when you buy it. But most of the times that I've used after or, uh, commercial oar leashes, I've had them release on me when my oar went into the water, and that's not what I want. I want the oar to stay with my boat if it comes out of my oar lock. So I like just using a cord. So this is five millimeter cord. I cut it to four foot lengths, and then all I do is do a bullet. So uh, this is not a knot tying class, uh, but uh, bullet is one that you should, as a whitewater boater, really have down. And so I can tie this around my oar in the mornings um, at the boat launches very quick and easy. And then I even put a quick release hitch in it uh, just so, and the reasoning behind that is I've had an oar go in the water, get stuck in between two rocks and my boat was pinned because that oar had came out of the oar lock and gone in and got lodged. Very rare that it's gonna happen. Um, but what I like about it is then the way I was taught was to put a quick release in my bowline. And so what's nice about it is, and I leave a little bit more of a tail here, but you're able to reach into the water and pull this and it comes undone. And so we were able to float away from the oar, uh, grab a spare out, and uh, we were able to get through the rapid and then pick up our gear after. So. Uh, those are just some of the things on it, um, and then I'll move into the oars that I carry. So to finish off, uh, I'll be talking about oars. Um, I'm very lucky, and both my day boat and my uh, multi-day boat are pretty close to the same width for where the oar locks sit on them. And so I'm able to have the exact same set of oars, or length of oars, uh, for all my boats. Um, so because of that, I'm able to have three different styles. Um, and I use them interchangeably for what I'm paddling. Uh, with that said, the only set of oars that I would love to add, um, if anyone has them out there that are willing to sell them, is I would love a pair of uh, Sawyer Whitewater Smokers. Uh, those are the ones I used to guide with, and I absolutely love them. That's what I would have bought instead of the square tops. But the only downside on uh, smokers is they're incredibly heavy. And so somebody of my size, I have no problem swinging them. But uh, I set up this frame for also my wife, who doesn't paddle as much as I do. And so just swinging a smoker on a five-day multi-day trip 
for somebody that doesn't paddle year round uh, would just, it would smoke her. So um, with that said, I do love these uh, Sawyer square tops. Downside on them is if you break them, you have to replace the entire oar and they're, they're expensive. But I like the flex of the wood in it. It gives me as close to that smoker feel um, that I was very used to, uh, but with just out the weight there. And they do come uh, counterbalanced uh, because of that uh, wood top. Uh, it's not the same type of counterbalance I've, I feel like uh, that you'd get to adding weight in like a handle. Um, and so they're, they're just an incredibly comfortable uh, or to paddle, um, you know, seven days at a time. So uh, next one is I have, and so I have two of all these, right? So um, next are Sawyer pole cats. Um, and these are what I hang on the side of my boat for spares most of the time. Um, if I am just running a single boat um, or taking my boat uh, with like a group, um, I'll probably hang you know, my square tops as spares on the side. Um, but if I'm running both boats, I'll put a pole cat on either, uh, on either one. And these things are okay. Um, I think for an economical, um, purchase, uh, for the price point, uh, pole cats are great. Um, but they just, they flex a lot there. And so I don't feel like I get a really good stroke out of them. Um, and so these would be probably, these are my least favorite. These are the ones I throw when I'm training somebody because if they break, they're cheap. And so um, that's what it, these things are the best for. So, um, and then finally is I use Sawyer MXSs. Um, their system is a little bit hard to follow. Um, but so in the length or in stiffness, it would go pull cat. MXSs and then the MXG. So the G is just a full graphite um, and full carbon weave over the top. And uh, the MXSs is kind of in that middle range. Um, I feel like I don't need that full stiffness of an MXG, definitely for my 13 foot day frame, right? And then if I'm doing a really heavy boat, I usually am in my uh, square top. So um, it's just, this works for me having these setups. I would say if you were just going to buy one or to fit all of them, um, a smoker or an MXG are great options. Um, but I think too, if you're in that three, nine and a half foot or length and lower, then the MXSs work great. I think once you break over that 10 foot range, those MXGs, you just have so much more power on those ores. Um, that I think it's important to get the stiffer ore. And then finally, uh, ore tips. So I bought these things and got the Dyna, um, uh, the Duramax blades and was just going to run them until I broke them. And I still haven't broke them yet. So uh, hopefully at some point these things will get destroyed. And uh, I plan on putting the, uh, I really like the wood um, smoker tips on there. Um, I think they're pretty comparable to the Dynalite blade. So, uh, but anything I think for Sawyer, you're just not going to go wrong. So, uh, with that said, uh, like in closing is it, it can get really confusing on like what or lengths you should have, what frames, what boats, everything. So I've never paddled a bad boat. These are the boats that I really love. Um, the ones I feel comfortable with. But I think even if you go out and let's take uh, Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain, I think I've paddled those boats and they're still great. They might not be at the same price level um, as other ones, but they they track us as well. I've never had a boat that hasn't been super fun to run out on the water. So uh, if you are getting into it, reach out to me. I'm happy to. And then I'm going to post a link in the description and the biggest thing is it's going to be on ore length. Uh, so Zach at Gear Garage, uh, he runs Northwest Rafting Company. He runs a really good YouTube channel and he broke down what ore length you should get. And I think that should be the Bible on ore length. Um, I used to run smaller ores. I've switched to larger ones and they make a huge difference. So 
Uh, with that said, thank you so much for watching. This concludes our three-part series. And then uh, hit me up on any questions you guys have or if you guys are planning on running a trip and have a question. So outside of that, hopefully I'll see you guys on the water.